I'm sitting on the floor again. You know what that means? It's time to check out another cabinet. Today, we're gonna rip through the Angle Pro E212 VB cabinet. Let's do it. All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, my name is Kyle. What I do is I take all sorts of awesome high gain related guitar equipment. I record it with a simple SM57 setup and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E standard thrash riffs, drop C hardcore riffs, and 35 year old dudes that act like they never hit puberty, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button on the way out, subscribing, so you don't miss any more of my stuff. Thanks. All right guys, so today we are checking out this absolute monster of a cabinet. I don't know why I put so many pauses in that sentence. This is the Engel Pro E212 VB. V stands for vertical, B stands for butt liquor. No, I don't know what the B stands for. And I don't even know what the V stands for vertical, but I'm going out on a limb and guessing. If you guys have never played an Engel cabinet before, you're seriously missing out because they are some of the most unique some of the most well-built cabinets on the market. They always come loaded with great speakers. They always bring the solid bass response, which is what I always love about angle cabinets. This E212 VB is no exception. This thing comes loaded with vintage 30s. Of course it does because vintage 30s are just the metal standard. And if you don't like it, you can sell them and you can trade them out for something else. This baby is front loaded. It is all birch construction and it is overbuilt to hell. It is definitely bigger in size than most of your horizontal cabinets. It's got a decent, de I mean, it's got the same depth as a four x 12 cab would, and it is considerably wider than a lot of other 212 cabs, especially if you're getting something horizontal. One of the things that I love about vertical 212 cabinets is that they project the sound up to your ears better, especially when they're a slant cab like this one is. Now I know everybody thinks it's fashionable to have straight cabs and yeah, they look cooler on stage, but I am always a fan of slant cabs because they actually project that sound up at you. That way you can actually dial in your amp faithfully on stage. You will actually be able to hear it while you are playing and you will be able to dial it in so that you're not killing the ears of your audience with ice pick treble because when these speakers shoot straight out, or they are on this plane and you're dialing in your amp with your ears up here, you tend to dial in the amp with way too much trouble and therefore your audience just gets absolutely blasted in the ears while you're chugging away like an idiot thinking that you have great tone. And uh, yeah, nobody wins. So that's why I like vertical cabinets when it comes to two by 12s, especially slant cabs such as this angle bad boy here. So on top of being front loaded, this thing has the awesome looking metal front panel here. Not only is this going to protect your speakers from virtually anything, but it also lends itself to the sound. The top end on these is going to be more pronounced than they would be on something with a cloth covering, especially Mesa or orange cabs where the cloth covering on those significantly dampens those high frequencies. On the angle, those high frequencies are gonna be loud and proud and that really accentuates angle amplifiers voicing because most angles, if you play them through something like a Mesa cab, you're gonna have to really crank the highs in the presence to get the brightness out of the angle amps. They are voiced for their cabinets. With these metal panels in mind, they just let through a lot more high end. So the amps naturally have less high end in their preamp, but I personally think that angle cabs work best with angle amplifiers. They really bring out the best out of their amps. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. So on top of the features that we've already gone over, we're gonna take a handle off. We're gonna take a peek inside this bad boy see what's going on, and then we're gonna plug in multiple amplifiers and riff through this thing and see how it reacts to different voiced amps. Here we go. Shit, where's my phone? Oh, there it is, okay. Oh, f Is that thing like glued on? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. That thing was on there. <laughs> All right, guys, so we've got the handle off. We're gonna take a look inside here. Before we do that, I do have to send a special shout out to my friends over at Sweetwater. They have sent out this cab on loan to me in order to share with you guys for the Angle Month content that we are doing right now. And while this is not a sponsored video and I don't get to keep the cab, I still have to send a huge shout to Sweetwater for sending this thing out to me so I can share it with you guys here on the channel. 
If you guys want to pick up this, any other angle gear, any gear at all, make sure to hit that Sweetwater affiliate link down below in the description because I get a little kickback from that. And anytime you click that link, whether you buy something or not, it actually helps the channel and makes stuff like this possible. So thank you and huge thanks to Sweetwater again. Sweetwater. All right, guys, so handle is off. Look at that beautiful plywood, man. That is some thick plywood. And even in the handle area, it's beveled. So there should actually be another piece of plywood right here to give you the idea of the full thickness of this cabinet. As I stated, angle cabs are heavy duty for sure. Let's take a look inside. All right, so we've got birch baffles, as you can see in the speaker holes here. Those are also thick baffles. And then on the bottom, they've got extra pieces of wood to brace things and make this cab even more stout. And then on the back, we've got thick plywood frames to attach the back panel and to really just stiffen this cab up. This thing is a very well-built piece of material. And even if you look in the corners, it's kind of hard to see because my camera's focusing on the wires, but there are glue in those joints. So these things are glued as well as I'm sure properly jointed. Very, very good construction. As you can see here, we've got our vintage 30s. 16 ohm, 216 ohm V30s makes for an 8 ohm load. But being that these are 16 ohm V30s, they'll be a little bit brighter up top, a little bit scoopier in the mids, as 16 ohm speakers always are. And then, interesting, on the back panel, and I believe that my other angle cabs were like this too, uh, we've got this foam batting here. And what that is going to do is that is going to soak up some of those high frequencies. So it's not going to be so bright. Instead of reflecting directly off the back panel and bouncing back outwards, this is going to soak up some frequencies. It is going to alter the sound. It is going to subdue that top end a little bit. And if I remember correctly, this foam batting in the back generally tends to give a better low end response because it kind of tricks the speakers into thinking that there is more internal cab volume than there is. That may not apply to foam, but I know that that was an old trick for subwoofer box building. You would put fiberglass fill in it and it would make the speakers basically pound harder. That is all bro science though. I cannot confirm any of that. I am not smart enough. You guys let me know down in the comments. I do know that this foam stuff will pull that high end back a little bit and make it not so grating on the ears. But yeah, this cab is extremely well constructed. Uh, that handle was on there leading me to believe that the tolerances on these things are very, very tight, which is awesome. And then to the back of the cab, we've got our panel here that has our mono stereo switch, a nice metal panel. You're not breaking that thing anytime soon. We do have plastic jacks though. Don't love the plastic jacks. Those never seem to last. Would love to see metal jacks there, but everything else about this cab is super high quality. So with all that being said, let's put the handle back on. Let's stack some sick amps on top of this thing and let's hear how it sounds with an SM57 in front of it. All right, guys, so I grabbed four of the most hilariously oversized and badass amps on the planet to pair with this angle 2x12 cab. We've got an SM57 on that top vintage 30. You are going to hear no post-processing and we're going to rip a riff or two through each amp and see how it responds to this cabinet, starting with the EVH 5153 Stealth on the Blue Channel. Here we go. <laughs> Sounds fucking incredible. I enjoy my job way too much. The EVH through this cab, super, super big, percussive, low end response, ultra tight. I've got the resonance turned up to, hey, can you not make so much noise? I've got the resonance turned up to about three o'clock on the back. We've got the lows turned up and this cab is handling all of that low end without problem. It is not overly bright. 
definitely cutting, definitely present. Sounds seriously ridiculous. Like the 50 watt on top of this cab would be such an awesome pairing. The 100 watt looks ridiculous but it also sounds ridiculous in the best way possible. Let's move on to the Angle Inferno. guys so as i mentioned in the beginning of the video the angle amps pair so well with their cabinets that just added so much of the low end that the amp needed and i was able to turn the treble way down to about noon in order to get the top end response that i wanted it was still bright still cutting but this is the first time that i've heard the angle inferno have the low end response that i particularly like which is big yet tight and still percussive this cab is benefiting this amp they are pairing super well together and uh yeah i'm having fun let's move on to the bogner uber ultra <laughs> So as you guys can hear, the Uber Ultra just has a massive wall of low end, but it's tight. And even though we have a ton of low end coming through the cab, the cab is staying tight. Like I said, these cabs are ridiculously overbuilt. They're going to keep that low end tight no matter how much you are pushing through it. Dude, I'm loving this cab. This cab is paired really well with all three amplifiers so far. Really happy with the tones that is coming out of this thing. <sighs> and now I want one. So let's move on to the last amp. A stock rectifier be that tight like that this cab just holds the low end together so well uh, it's adding the top end aggression that the mech the rectifier the mexifier the rectifier needs if you are dialing it with the treble to zero and the mids up in order to get that mid presence the low end was super tight super punchy that was just a very aggressive sound I actually really like that and I think that that uh, Mesa would pair really well with the Uber Ultra going through a pair of these bad boy 2x12s. And I don't care if they would look hilariously lopsided because it would sound amazing. So that's going to do it for me today, guys, on the Angle E 212 Pro VB. I think I got that backward. Doesn't matter. You guys know what this thing is by now. If you guys would like to pick up one of these for yourself, hit that Sweetwater affiliate link. They are going to run you a thousand bucks. I promise you it is worth it. You will get top quality craftsmanship, you will get top quality materials, and you will get a top quality sound. That part is subjective, but
for me, I think it's worth it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I want to hear your feedback. Let me know down in the comments. How do you think that this cab sounds? What did you hear on your end through the SM57 and your speakers that I didn't hear here in the room? Hopefully it sounds good on your end because in my end, it sounded ridiculously punchy, very present, but not harsh. This is an excellent cab, guys, and I am super happy to have it here on loan from Sweetwater. And I think I got to find myself one now because this may be one of my favorite 212 cabs I've ever played. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.